Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm your host, Michael Prisdale, and today I'm going to be smoking the CAO Arcana line, Mortal Coil. A little late to the party on this CAO Mortal Coil. I'm looking forward to smoking this and comparing notes between the original Arcana, this Mortal Coil here, and the Firewalker. I also smoked the CAO Amazon Basin, the Anejo, which was absolutely fantastic. So CAO coming up with all different unique types of ideas. CAO wanted to come up with a very traditional Dominican method of fermentation of tobaccos using palm leaves, also known as yaguas. And obviously the JC Newman yagua also exists as a cigar line that was released, I believe, right around the same time, maybe even a little bit earlier. So this is CAO's take on the palm leaf fermentation. And this cigar itself has received kind of a mixed bag of reviews. So you have people like Cigar Hound Dog that reviewed it. They called it pedestrian, did not like uh, a lot of the notes that came off of it. You also had other people like the Vintage Cigar who reviewed it, loves it, thinks that it's a fantastic cigar and very unique in its own way. So just a plethora of different examples out there. Half Wheel's article kind of goes into depth and explains the fermentation process using Yagua, a little on Half Wheel's webpage about mentioning the different methods and various fermentation, right? They also mention the fact that this particular cigar has an aroma of chow mein, beef chow mein on the foot, pre-light. I believe that Cigar Hound Dog also had a very unique flavor note. He claimed that it was a mixture of like raisin bread and hot sauce, I believe. And I definitely smell the hot sauce like Tabasco, that vinegar kind of note. But it also reminds me of almost a Saint Germain style florality, if I had to uh, liken it to something in the liquor world. It is a six and an eighth inch by 50 ring gauge cigar. The retail price point MSRP, or sorry, the MSRP is 10.99. The wrapper is a US Connecticut broadleaf. The binder is a US Connecticut shade. The fillers, get ready for this. Dominican Republic, Andulo, and Piloto Cubano, Honduras, Jamastran Valley, and Nicaraguan Esteli. So we are back smoking on down our mortal coil. We're about five, 10 minutes in. Flavors on this are actually really nice. Florality and the overly like elderflower floral note that I got, the Saint Germain. As well as a strong amount of black pepper off the retro help. Not eye watering, not abrasive at all on the nostrils or on the upper palate, but definitely there, definitely present. It has good balance. Touch of cream, some really nice sweetness underneath as well. Almost like a molasses sweetness. And I'm sure that the, the dark earth, the peaty earth notes help kind of move that from like a honey note into more of a richer brown sugar, demerara, molasses y note, which is what I'm kind of getting. Pretty fantastic. It does have like also a hint of raisin to it. How to uncoil the mortal coil. Okay, let's see. Maybe if we start, nope, can't start there. Oh. We start up here and a little piece of wrapper leaf came off with my cigar band, the Mortal Coil. Whoop. Smoking down the Mortal Coil, the black pepper has increased quite tremendously off the retro hill. It's almost eye-watering and stinging at this point, but still okay. Flavor notes haven't really transitioned much, still maintaining that nice molasses, that brown sugar, demerara syrup kind of note to it. And I decided to go with my pairing and for the pairing tonight, we are going to go with the brand new Blade and Bow coming to us from the renewed, remodeled Stitzel Weller Distillery. And it does say Stitzel Weller Distillery Co. on this beautiful band at the top. It says that uh, the story goes for the Blade and Bow that this is coming from the brand, brand new remodeled Stitzel Weller Distillery in Kentucky that Diageo owns and bought in 1992. They Stop production of bourbon whiskey there. It closed, remodeled in the early 2000s. So they have been waiting and releasing certain Stitzel Weller expressions in limited quantities through their Orphan Barrel program. Those of you that are unfamiliar with Orphan Barrels, they are very expensive. And typically age range between 18 and 25 years, I believe. So some very high-end, super aged expressions of bourbon whiskey that are available. Usually every year a new release comes out of an Orphan Barrel, which the story Story is similar to lost and found cigars, right? They find an orphan barrel all by itself in the distillery and they decide to make a single barrel expression off of it. This Blade and Bow is a Solara aged 
bourbon. So very unique in its own way because the Solara aging process is a traditional kind of Sherry Madeira aging process, usually done in Spain. There are a lot of rums that undergo a Solara process. There are a lot of Sherry Port Madeiras that undergo Solara processes throughout Spain, where you typically have your younger spirits or your younger fortified wines in the top layer of the Solara and the barrels are stacked to where they can flow into other barrels in the stacking process. I'll throw up a graphic so that you can see it, but essentially you're taking your younger stock and you're aging it into older stock so that the older stock has this very vibrant, younger, smaller amount of spirit in it or fortified wine, right? And the older stock is left as the majority shareholder in the barrel. Very unique process, but very fun in its own way. And it says that the five keys of blade and bow once hung on the front doors of the iconic Stitzel Weller Distillery, these heavy brass keys represented the five steps of crafting bourbon and symbolized the art of making the world's finest whiskeys. And then it has kind of each one of the little side notes on the other five sides of the bottle. Absolutely beautiful, 45.5% alcohol by volume or 91 proof. 91 proof, we've got Solara aging bourbon, right, from the historic Stitzel Weller Distillery, newly remodeled by Diageo in the early 2000s, and the five keys, or the five tenets, the blade and the bow, right, representing the top and the shaft of the key, the five tenets of bourbon making, which is grains, yeast, fermentation, distillation, and aging. Very fun stuff. Very uh, honey, heather, marshmallowy kind of notes. Reminiscent of a scotch to me, even though we're drinking bourbon. Hmm. Little clove, little cinnamon, vanilla, cherry. The finish is like vanilla, vanilla Coke or like Coca-Cola vanilla and almost like a donut kind of flavor. Some nice tannins, but overall kind of a middle of the road finish. Picking up a lot more chocolate and toffee with that. Really nice. I'm bringing out the raisin notes, bringing out the earthy notes, the maritime salinity mixes well with the, with the bourbon. And just overall, really solid pairing. And although the bourbon whiskey has allowed us to retain a lot of those sweet notes, we're definitely getting a little bit more cedar, a lot more oak, even in like a almost mesquite oak kind of way. The underlying tones, underlying tones of raisin, vanilla, all of those things primarily being contributed by the bourbon and not necessarily by the cigar. So it is drying out the palate, does require this bourbon <laughs> in order to help it along. And I think that overall, you know, the Moro Coil is good. Um, it is much better of an experience than the Arcana series Firewalker, I will say that much. Definitely worthy of a single stick pickup, however, I would default to the Amazon Basin if I can only choose one CAO out of the more recent ones that I've smoked. I think that it's Amazon Basin, it's Flathead for me, and then this Arcana uh, Mortal Coil, which very unique, very fun. It makes me want to smoke the Yagua by JC Newman even more to kind of do a little compare and contrast. Thank you all so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, continuing to grow the channel and the community here at Master Your Ash. I look forward to catching you again for another Laden Bow Bourbon and CAO Cigar Review.